Hello, this is Contemporary Studies in English Language class. We have been studying the topic semantics and today I shall deal with the next subtopic in semantics that is lexical semantics. Before I start teaching you lexical semantics, let me briefly talk about the examination pattern. Because your semester end examination is very near. Some students called me and asked me regarding the second unit test for 20 marks. Deshmukh sir has already given you some assignments for the second unit test. So the assignments will carry 20 marks. For my paper 2, I shall give you some topics for assignments. You have to write the assignments and you have to send those assignments to me personally. I mean you have to send the soft copy of the assignment to my email address. I shall give you the details very soon. This is the first thing. Second thing is I realized that only a few students are watching my recorded lectures. I told you after you watch the lecture, please comment or please write your post your name and roll number in the comment box so that I would come to know who has attended the lectures but just six to eight students are attending my lectures I again suggest you request you to go through all these lectures carefully because it will be really difficult for you to answer the questions in, in the examination if you have not gone through these lectures having said this now let me start with lexical semantics now what is lexical semantics you know this word semantics but and you also know this word lexical lexis stands for word lexis means word so lexical semantics deals with words let us have a definition of lexical defin uh, lexical semantics so lexical semantics is the study of what individual lexical items mean why they mean what they do how we can represent all of this and where are sorry where the combined interpretation for an utterance comes from so lexical semantics deals with meaning of words the definition simply means that what do words mean what they do why words mean what they do how do we interpret meaning of words how meaning is associated or how meaning is attached to certain words or how why certain words make sense and why certain make words do not make sense for example in my previous class i said that this is a meaningful word but if i shuffle the order of the alphabets and if I write something like this this is a meaningless word as soon as you read this you know that this is not a word or this doesn't have any meaning and when you read this you understand what I am saying or talking about or what I have written so words acquire meaning from the words that surround them especially the words are adjoining so sometimes words acquire meaning because they come or you know they come after certain words or they come before certain words so words acquire meaning through the adjoining words adjoining words which come before or you know a d j o a d j o ing adjoining that is the meaning of the definition so words acquire meaning from the words that surround them for example the cat sat on the mat now here the cat sat on the mat the word cat is in a syntagmatic relationship with the preceding word so what is syntagmatic? Syntagmatic simply means there is a chain of words. These words 
come in a certain order. The words have to follow certain order in order to make a meaningful sentence. You cannot break the order of the words. You cannot write the in the middle of the word or the at the set at the end. So you have to follow this order. This is called as syntagmatic. Syntagmatic. That is, in a sentence, there is a certain word order, and we call it as SVO structure. That is subject, verb, object. So this is subject and verb and object. Again, uh, the cat is a phrase where there are two words, the and cat. So whenever you write the cat, you have to write the first and cat letter. You cannot say cat the sat on the mat. That is not possible. So the words in this sentence are syntagmatically arranged. That is, there is syntagmatic relationship with the preceding words. So, cat is joined with the, sat is, uh, sat comes after cat and uh, there is a relationship between sat and cat, sat and on, etc. So, every word has, a, has an association with the word before it. This is called as syntagmatic relationship. So, the word cat, now this is uh, this is important to form a sentence that is there should be a chain of words the chain of words should have uh, I mean the chain of words uh, they, they should be arranged in a specific order so that they give you a correct sentence a meaningful sentence if that chain is broken the log if the logic is broken then the sentence will be grammatically meaningless if i say the sat cat the on mat so i cannot change the word order in the sentence that is the meaning of syntagmatic but then the words should also be paradigmatically arranged so here you see paradigmatic p a r a see this one p a r a D G M A T I C. So the word cat can be substituted by the dog, and these two words are known to be in a paradigmatic relationship. I can create another sentence where I will remove cat and I will remove dog. The dog sat on the mat. That is fine. So that is a correct sentence. What I have done, I have replaced cat with a dog. I have replaced a four-leg animal with another four-legged animal. Cat with dog. Similarly, I can say the tiger sat on the mat. That is also possible. So, there is also chain of words, chain of similar words, cat, dog, that is animals. So, in, a, in this sentence, I can replace cat with dog. But, I cannot replace cat with car. I cannot say the car sat on the mat or the pen sat on the mat because these are non-living objects which, which do not sit. Sitting is, sitting is associated with living beings. So you can say the child sat on the mat. That is also possible. So cat and dog here in this sentence, uh, the word cat can be substituted by the word dog and these two words are known to be in a paradigmatic relationship. Uh, let us now explore some of the paradigmatic lexical relations such as synonym, synonymy, antonymy, homonymy and polysemy. We will also see superordination and hyponymy and metonymy. So, Lexical semantics simply means meaning of words. How words acquire meaning. Here it is mentioned that words acquire meaning with the help of adjoining words. That is with the help of the words which come and before certain words. So a sentence is meaningful because the order of words is correct. The order of words is 
followed and therefore we can make meaning or we can understand meaning of a sentence now let us study synonymy and antonymy you know the word synonym and you also know the word antonym synonym simply means samanarthi shabda antonym no, words having difficult uh, diff, words having opposite meanings now synonyms simply means same name synonyms are words with the same meaning english is rich in synonyms because the vocabulary of this language is derived from anglo saxon french latin and greek languages however it is to be noted though the denotative or reference meanings of synonyms are same due to differences in connotation two words can never really be absolute synonyms so synonyms words having same meaning two words can never really be absolute synonyms if there are two such words one of them will become redundant and go out of use so even if you have synonyms for a word they are never identical if they are identical then one word will automatically lose its place so synonymy nearly always means partial or near synonym the linguistic context determines which of a number of similar words should be used for example for example uh, when we talk of pupils in a school students in a university disciples disciples of a religious talk of pupils in a school students in a sorry uh, you know when we talk up when we talk about these words that is pupils students disciples and learners although they appear synonymous there is some change in meaning in all these words that is pupil is different from student student is different from disciple etc for example when we talk of pupils in a school students in a university disciples of a religious leader and learners at a motor driving school jari he var var samanarthi shabd vatat asle ek sarkhe shabd vatat asle tari tancha madhe thoda sa farak hai pupils स्कूल चिल्ड्रेनला वपरल जॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी मधे शिकार विद्या स्टूडेंट्स वपरल जिसाइपल मजे को एखाद देवा कि एखाद साधु का डिसाइपल शिष्य ज्यादा मन तो अपन तो लर्नर्स को दोज हू वॉन्ट टू एक्वायर न्यू स्किल्स फॉर एक्जाम्पल इफ यू वॉन्ट टू लर्न अ कार देन यू आर अ लर्नर लर्नर इज डिफरंट फ्रॉम पीपील स्टूडेंट इज डिफरंट फ्रॉम डिसाइपल्स तो ये सगले सीनॉनिमिक सीनॉनिम्स हैं दैट इज दे हैव सिमिलर मीनिंग बट नॉट एक्जैक्टली द सेम मीनिंग तस जर आत सगले वर्ड्स अस्तित्व राहले नापैकी एक वर्ड अस्तित्व रहता दैट इज द मीनिंग सो सीनॉनिमी रेफर्स टू वर्ड्स विच हैव सिमिलर मीनिंग्स बट नॉट आइडेंटिकल मीनिंग्स जसे कि आप है बगा कि गुरु शिक्षक गुरु आ शिक्षक ये फरक है शिक्षक मजे को जो शात शिकवत वर्ग शिकवत तो शिक्षक गुरु मजे को जो अपने एक प्रकार से ज्ञान देतो कि जो तुम्हारा उपदेश करतो चांग मार्ग पर लवतो मे वर्ग एखाद विषय शिकवे शिक्षक आता सो टीचर आ गुरु ये फरक है तो ये ऑलरे ऑल दो दे आर सीनॉनिमस दे आर नॉट एक्जैक्टली द सेम वर्ड्स दे मीन दे हैव सर्टन डिफरंट शेड्स ऑफ मीनिंग सो अ पर्सन विथ अ वेल डेवलप्ड वोकैबलरी विल नो विच वर्ड टू यूज इन अ पर्टिक्युलर कॉन्टेक्स्ट कुछ कुछ शब्द वपराय ज्याला चांगली वोकैबलरी जैसी डेवलप है थोड़क जैसे चांगल चांगल पद्धति ती भाषा आत्मसात के लिए है द पर्सन हू हैज एडॉप्टेड द लैंग्वेज वेल अंडरस्टैंड्स द डिफरेंस बिट्वीन दीज टू थिंग्स नाउ सीनॉनिम्स डिफर इन द फॉलोइंग वेज 
डायलेक्ट कि रिजनल वरायटीज आता लैड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इज अ रिजनल वरायटी फॉर बॉय लैस फॉर गर्ल ऑटम एंड फॉल दोन सेम शब्द है पट सम पीपल यूज ऑटम सम पीपल यूज फॉल देन स्टाइल्स एंड रजिस्टर का ही जन कॉप मनत का ही जन पोलिस मन मनत सेम स्टाइल एंड रजिस्टर कॉप इज व्री कॉप इज इनफॉर्मल पोलिस मन इज फॉर्मल किड इज अगेन इनफॉर्मल चिल्ड्रेन इज फॉर्मल देन सीनॉनिम्स डिफर इन द फॉलोइंग वेज डिफरंट कोलोकेशन आता का ही वेला सीनॉनिम्स सुधा बदलत कि कोलोकेशन्स वपरले जता कोलोकेशन्स मे सर्टन वर्ड्स गो विथ सर्टन अदर वर्ड्स जसे कि बगा बिग एंड लार्ज ऑलमोस्ट सेम सिम सिमिलर मीनिंग वर्ड्स हैं सीनॉनिम्स हैं पट बिग बिजनेस मटल जता लार्ज हाउस अस मटल जता लार्ज बिजनेस नहीं मनत कि बिग हाउस अस ही नहीं मनत बिग हाउस इज नॉट रॉन्ग बट बिग हाउस इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेड लार्ज हाउस इज एक्सेप्टेड सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज कोनोकेशन दैट इज द वर्ड लार्ज विल गो विथ हाउस द वर्ड लार्ज विल नॉट गो विथ बिजनेस इफ यू वॉन्ट टू टॉक अबाउट यू नो खूब मोटा व्यवसाय हाबदल तुम्हारा बोला है तो यू हैव टू से बिग सो बिग गोज विथ बिजनेस ऑल दो बिग एंड लार्ज आर सीनॉनिम्स ऑल दो दे आर आइडेंटिकल दे डू नॉट mean the same so uh, they are there are collocations certain words go with certain other words mhanje tumcha lakshat yete ka big and large same ache pan big house nahi mhatla jat karan te collocation ahe ek prakar che kay mhanaycha tela tasa niyam nahiye pan likhit swarupa cha niyam nahi but accepted norm kay ahe you say large house okay next bagu apan डिफरंट ऐटिट्यूड्स डिफरंट ऐटिट्यूड दाखनेसुद्धा सीनॉनिम्स का उपयोग होतो, जसे कि स्लिम स्लेंडर एंड स्किनी तीन वर्ड्स हैं बगा स्क्रीन वाला दिता है स्लिम स्लेंडर एंड स्किनी ऑल दो द थ्री वर्ड्स आर सीनॉनिम्स दे मीन डिफरंट स्लिम हा पॉजिटिव वर्ड है तिने का अर्थ का एखाद व्यक्ति की शरीर यष्टी दाखने the way a person looks. You can call him or her slim. You can call him or her slender or skinny. But there is certain change in meaning in each word. Slim is a positive word. So when you say you look slim, you are appreciating one's physique. कि तू slim दिस तो है. Slim हाँ एक positive word है. But skinny हाँ negative word है. स्किनी मे एकदम हड़कुला एकदम बारीक यू लुक व्री स्किनी यू हैव लॉस्ट वेट अस जर तुम्हें मटला तो ऐक्चुअली यू आर यू आर नॉट एप्रिशिएटिंग वन्स फिजिक तुम्हें एक प्रकार हड़कुला मनत आहत कि खूब अंग काठी बारीक है अशा व्यक्ति लकीनी मंटल जता स्लिम हा पॉजिटिव वर्ड है स्लेंडर इज न्यूट्रल स्लेंडर इज नाइदर You know, neither negative, neither a negative word nor a positive word. So, different attitudes. In order to show different attitudes, you you will use different words. So, when you say you are slim, or you look slim, it means one thing, and when you say you are looking skinny, it gives different connotation or it has different meaning. This is baga antonyms, antonymy, um, antonyms, opposite words. morphologically different words like old and new they are morphologically different words old opposite new now again there is binary that is baka binary kashe aste one doesn't understand the concept of old unless one knows what is new ओल्ड कभी ओल्ड कशाला मना चे तुम्हारा कहना नहीं ज्या जोपर्यंत तुम्हारा न्यू का कहत नहीं वही से वर्षा यू वॉन्ट अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ न्यू अनलेस यू नो द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ओल्ड सो दे आर बायनरीज दैट इज बोथ ऑफ देम डिपेंड ऑन वन अनादर सो वेन यू टीच अ चाइल्ड वॉट इज ओल्ड यू हैव टू टेल इट 
also what is new right so these binaries are present in the language that is what sosur said so uh, morphologically different words like old new or words with negative prefixes like possible impossible asha prakare sudha antonyms aplyala milu shaktat काय केलं इथं पॉसिबलचं इम्पॉसिबल केलं आहे दॅट इज इम हे प्रेफिक्स त्याला ॲड केलेलं आहे अशा तऱ्हेने त्याचा निगेटिव्ह वर्ड शोधून काढलेला आहे आता ग्रेडेबल अँटॉनिम्स असतात बघा जसं की फॅट थिन ग्रेडेबल काय म्हणायचं तर त्यांची कम्पॅरेटिव्ह आणि सुपरलेटिव्ह डिग्री होते फॅट फॅटर फॅटेस थिन थिनर थिननेस्ट एटसेट्रा फॅट फॅटर थिन थिनर फास्ट स्लो फास्टर स्लोअर फास्टेस्ट स्लोएस्ट अशा तऱ्हेने त्यांची कंपॅरिझन होऊ शकते ना कॉम्प्लिमेंटरी अँटॉनिम्स पण असतात बघा कॉम्प्लिमेंटरी अँटॉनिम्स म्हणजे काय डेड आणि अलाईव्ह नॉट एक्झिक एक्झॅक्टली अपोजिट वर्ड्स हे काय एक्झॅक्टली अपोजिट वर्ड्स आहेत का नाही याला म्हणायचं एक्झॅक्टली अपोजिट वर्ड्स बरोबर म्हणजे अँटॉनिम्स हेही अपोजिट वर्ड्स आहेत बट दे आर नॉट अपोजिट टू वन अनादर दे आर कॉम्प्लिमेंटरी Antonyms that is they give you an idea so uh, if clear either or conditions are expressed such as dead or alive or in and out these are complementary antonyms that is when two words represent two sides of a relationship such as husband and wife at the husband and wife they represent two sides of relationship it is called as converse or rash relational antonyms Con- screen var tumhi baka complementary antonyms dista hai tumhala so the difference between them is the difference in degree or scale and so they can co-occur in comparative or superlative forms for example fat fatter fattest etc if clear or either or conditions are expressed such as dead alive or in out these are called complementary anonyms ya enna kay manaycha complementary they are not exactly opposite of one another but um, they uh, they show conditions hmm. now converse relation relational antonyms converse kiwa tela relational antonyms mhanta jase ki husband and wife he antonyms nahi hai but they show two different sides of a relation parent child ki unless there is parent or unless there is husband there is there will no there will not be wife vice versa ki ekada relation ekada married couple tumhala dakhvaycha asel then you have to show husband and wife so they are complementary with one another they stand in a relational antonyms next bago apan homonymy and polysemy now what is homonymy now in homonymy you have the word homo and then nimi so two words having same form but different meaning homonymy stands for words having सेम फॉर्म बट डिफरंट मीनिंग होमोनिमीचे दोन प्रकार आहेत बघा टू टाईप्स आय एम सॉरी इट शुड बी टी डब्ल्यू ओ टू टू टाईप्स होमोनिमीचे टू टाईप्स बघा एक आहे होमोग्राफी होमोग्राफी बघा एल ई ए डी लीड मीन्स मेटल लीड शिस आणि लीड ऑल्सो मीन्स टू लीड पीपल सो हियर lead is a noun and here lead is a verb lead means metal here and here lead means lead as a verb means to lead people netrutva karne ata baka ya homonymy madhe kay ahe both the words are pronounced in the same way but they mean different things this is called as homography so in homography words are spelled same but have different pronunciations होमोनिमीचे दोन प्रकार आहेत एक आहे होमोग्राफी की ज्याच्यामध्ये दोन शब्द दोन किंवा दोनापेक्षा जास्त शब्द एकाच त्यांचं स्पेलिंग एकाच असतं पण डिफरंट प्रनाउन्सिएशन्स असतात 
This is pronounced as laid. And of course, then the meaning is different. So, any hence the pronunciation is lead. Understood? L e a d is pronounced as laid. She is a dhatu, and L e a d lead because. L E A D, lead is a metal and lead is a verb. So two words that are spelled same but have different pronunciation. हे तेंचा मतलब क्या है मुख्य फर्क है डिफरेंस है. Spelling वगैरह का नहीं. Spelling same है but pronunciations are different and also meanings are different. Homophony में देखा गा. S O U L and S O L E. Homophone. Phone means sound. Homo means similar. Homophony में जगा है. सेम साउंड सेम सेम सिमिलर साउंड्स वापरले जाता है एस ओ यू एल एंड एस ओ एल ई आर प्रोनाउंस्ड इन द सेम वे इट इज सोल अउडिफ्टोंग है पाहते चाहत सोल दैट इज होमोफोनी सो वर्ड्स व्हिच हैव आइडेंटिकल प्रोनंसिएशंस बट डिफरेंट स्पेलिंग्स एंड मीनिंग्स आर कॉल्ड एज होमोनिमी सो होमोग्राफी एंड होमोनिमी होमोनिमी चे दोन प्रकार हैं होमोग्राफी एंड होमोफोनी होमोग्राफी में देखा है फोनी होमोग्राफी में दे वर्ड्स हैविंग सेम spellings but different pronunciations and different meanings in homophony words having same pronunciations but different meanings next book open polysemy what is polysemy words having multiple meanings a word may have different meanings for example foot f double o t foot foot kasha sati vapar to apan vyakti cha pay dakhone sati table cha pay dakhone sati घड़ा चाव काटा दाखोने सटी हैंड की वह फुट असे ही मंडता सो फुट इज अ वर्ड व्हिच हैज मल्टीपल मीनिंग्स जैसे कि बगा द वर्ड फुट मींस द लोअर एक्सट्रीमिटी ऑफ द लेग बिलो द एंकल एंकल मंडे आपला घोटा घोटे चा खलचा पार्ट लगाय मने इसे foot but it can also mean the base of a hill or mountain foot kasha sathi vaparatat mountain cha kiwa base mountain cha kiwa hill cha base dakhone sathi foot ha shabd vaparla jato in a similar manner we also talk about mouth of a cave hands of a clock legs of a table or teeth of a comb teeth of a comb for example teeth of a कॉम्ब, C O M B, तीत, दांत, पन, जे कंगवेला अस्तात कि वह कंगवेचे दांत सुधा पन मंडतो, तीत हो फो कॉम मंडता, हैंड हाथ मंडतो आपन, पन घड़ेरचा काटा दाखोने सर्थी कि वह घड़ेरचा काटे ला सुधा, H A N D, हैंड हाथ शब्द है, तर हैंड हैज मल्टीपल मीनिंग्स, सो दिस इस कॉल्ड एस पॉलीसेमी, वर्ड्स हैविंग मल्टीपल मी now subordinate terms baga what are subordination or what are subordinate terms now um, subordinate terms also called hypernemes are words nouns that can be used to stand for an entire class or category of things words that stand for an entire class or कैटेगरी तला क्या मनाए जाए सबऑर्डिनेट टर्म्स फॉर एग्जांपल बर्ड व्हेन यू से बर्ड ते चाहे तुम्हें क्या करो टाकू शक्ता वे गुड़े नाउंस लियो शक्ता आउल आउल स्पैरो पिकॉक क्रो मेनी पीजन एट्सेट्रा सो दिस आर डिफरेंट नाउंस बट फॉर दिस नाउंस यू कैन यूज अ वर्ड और अनदर नाउं or such terms are called as subordinate terms. Thus, a subordinate term acts as an umbrella. Uh, it, it acts as an 
the subordinate term acts as an umbrella term that in its meaning includes the meaning of other words for example bird is the subordinate term covering owl peacock canary parrot etc similarly animal is a subordinate term covering cat dog cow and horse etc animal means जर म्हटलं तर ही एक काय आहे सबॉर्डिनेट टर्म आहे ॲनिमल म्हणजे काय फक्त एक नाही मेनी आहेत राईट तसंच प्लांट्स मी म्हटलं प्लांटसुद्धा मेनी आहेत वेगवेगळ्या प्रकारचे प्लांट्स असू शकतात करेक्ट सो देर आर सबॉर्डिनेट टर्म्स ऑल्सो विच इन्क्लूड सर्टन अदर टर्म्स सो दिस इज अ टॉपिक और दिस वॉज ऑन लेक्सिकल सेमेंटिक्स तर आज हा लेक्सिकल सेमेंटिक्स आपण बघितलेला आहे हायपोनेमी एक मला तुम्हाला सांगायचा हायपोनेमी इज हा पण एक आपल्याला सिलेबसमध्ये आहे हायपोनिमी सो इट इज अ क्लोजली रिलेटेड कॉन्सेप्ट इट इज अ रिलेशनशिप ऑफ हायरार्की इन विच द अपर टर्म इज द सुपर ऑर्डिनेट ऑर द sorry the upper term is the superordinate and the lower term is the hyponym for example parrot is a hyponym of bird and rose a hyponym of flower hyponymy is basically a matter of class membership it is a relation of inclusion however all hyponyms may not have superordinate terms hyponyms of a single superordinate term are called cohyponyms for example rose lily lotus jasmine marigold and tulip are cohyponyms because the subordinate term flower includes them all manje baka rose lily lotus jasmine marigold and tulip ya sagyan sathi tumhi ekach word vapru shakta flower तर हे काय आहेत को हायपोनिम्स आहेत कुठले म्हणजे एक प्रकारे चेन आहे एक प्रकारे या शब्दांची किंवा यू कॅन राईट डाऊन दीज वर्ड्स वन बिलो वन रोज लिली सपोज इफ आय आस्क यू टू राईट डाऊन नेम्स ऑफ फ्लॉवर्स यू कॅन जॉट डाऊन दीज नेम्स ऑफ फ्लॉवर्स वन बिलो वन ऑर साईड नो वन बिसाईड द अदर सो रोज लिली लोटस जॅस्मिन आर को हायपोनिम्स बिकॉज द सुपर ऑर्डिनेट टर्म फॉर देम इज फ्लॉवर so hyponymy involves entailment this is a rose entails that this is a flower manje baka suppose me asa manalo asa vakya lihla this is a rose i can replace rose with another flower suppose me flower baddal bolto hai ani mala ya rose cha ayvaji me suppose marigold lihla tulip lihla lily lihla चालू शकेल द सेंटेन्स विल बिकम ग्रॅमॅटिकली करेक्ट ऑफकोर्स द सेंटेन्स विन विल मीन डिफरंटली बट इन्स्टेड ऑफ दिस इन्स्टेड ऑफ दिस इज अ रोज इफ आय राईट दिस इज अ फ्लॉवर स्टील इट इज करेक्ट करेक्ट सो दिस इज अ रोज हे काय आहे इट एंटेल्स दॅट दिस इज अ फ्लॉवर दिस इज अ रोज म्हणजेच सॉरी entailment e n t a i l this is a rose simply means this is a flower that is called as hyponymy that is one word which covers all the other words i hope you have understood the topic very easy topic very easy to understand thus i have finished the unit 2 in the syllabus so now i shall start teaching unit number 3 and i i will deal i will also deal with unit number 4 please attend these le- lectures carefully otherwise you cannot write assignments and you cannot answer the questions in the examination thank you